ladies and gentlemen, you know, for many decades, whenever we in the Black community go through any type of hardships, what are we told? Pull yourself up by the bootstraps. That's what I did. I know how to manage my money. And they always try to say we're bad with money. We're bad at this. We're bad at that. And we don't take responsibility. And then everything suddenly implodes on the people that were carrying those messages. And ladies and gentlemen, what I mean is, you know, every time one thing I can tell you, even people I worked with, every time they try to put on airs, like they are living the life of perfection, I always find that those folks are the most flawed. And I'm sure many of you have heard these stories too. So I'm not really surprised that these folks, they always knew how to talk a good game, always. But when you take a closer look, in many cases, their lives are a mess. And they tend to me, when I come across people like these insurrectionists, they tend to live beyond their means. But they always want to project that they got themselves together. But the closer you look, the more you will realize they are out here struggling, if not worse than everyone else. A lot of suicides is due to money, money issues, or lack of job. So I'm not surprised. So the majority of these insurrectionists that went to Washington, D.C., they are finding they got all kinds of debts. They owe taxes and they have filed bankruptcy multiple times. That's what they're finding in these people. So these are the same ones, ladies and gentlemen, that will look us in the face and say, pull yourself up by the bootstraps. But when you take a closer look at them, don't appear that they've been pulling themselves up by the bootstraps at all. <laughs> okay, so please stop coming around and telling us these things. And you know damn well, you got all kinds of financial issues. Don't say that mess to us no more, because this is one more thing we will drag you on. So let's get to this Washington Post story that came out February 10th, 2021. Majority of the people arrested for the Capitol insurrection had a history of financial trouble. Now, y'all remember the real estate agent that flew in on a private jet and she was out on Twitter talking all kinds of shit on the first stimulus, talking about she didn't need the first stimulus. She got money. She got more money than you can imagine, right? She talked all that mess, right? I want you to listen to her financial background. Jenna Ryan seemed like an unlikely participant in the mob that stormed the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. She is a real estate agent from Texas. She flew into D.C. on a private jet, and she was dressed that day in clothes better suited for a winter tailgate than a war. Yet Ryan, 50, is accused of rushing into the Capitol past broken glass and blaring security alarms, according to federal prosecutors shouting, uh, fight for freedom, fight for freedom. But in a different way, she fits right in. Despite her outward signs of success, Ryan had struggled financially for years. She was still paying off $37,000 lien for unpaid federal taxes when she was arrested. She nearly lost her home to foreclosure before that. She filed for bankruptcy in 2012 and faced another IRS tax lien in 2010. Does she sound like the picture of success? Hell no. But she knows how to put on it. Like I said, they, they are taught real well how to put on airs, especially when a lot of people are listening to them or they're addressing Black people. They know how to talk a good game, y'all. But at the end of the day, their life is more effed up than ours in many cases. Nearly 60% of the people facing charges related to the Capitol insurrection showed signs of prior money troubles, including bankruptcies, notice of eviction or 
foreclosure, bad debt, or unpaid taxes over the past two decades, according to the Washington Post analysis of public records for 125 defendants with sufficient information to detail their financial histories. Uh, the group bankruptcy rate is 18%, which is nearly twice as high of that of the American public, the Post found. A quarter of them had been sued for money owed to a creditor. And one in five of them face losing their homes at one point, according to court filings. Mm -hmm. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Isn't that what they run around saying? But look at their situations. The financial problems are revealing because they offer potential clues to understanding why so many Trump supporters with professional careers and few with violent criminal histories were willing to participate at attacking, egged on by the president's rhetoric, painting him and his supporters as undeserving victims. Yeah, well, Trump is now calling them criminals and they need to go to jail. That's what he's saying about these people. It is hilarious. He completely turned on them 100%. While no single factor explains why someone decided to join in, especially if you've got financial troubles, you, the last thing you should have been doing is going to Washington, D.C. So that just go to show you these folks know how to talk a good game, but they neglect their immediate situation and they go run off and get themselves in even bigger financial trouble because court in America ain't cheap. Getting lawyers is not cheap. OK, so, hey, you got to deal. Excuse me. You got to deal with that now. All right. So while no single factor explains why someone decided to join in, experts say Donald Trump and his brand of grievances, politics tapped into something that resonated with hundreds of people who descended on the Capitol. That was more like thousands of people that descended on the Capitol. A lot of people showed up. Okay, and this historic burst of violence. I think what you're finding is more than just economic insecurity, but a deep seated feeling of, you know, so they feel a certain way about their situation. Things aren't going so well for these people, and they know it. But like I said, they know how to put on a, a Oscar performance when they get in front of us. Cynthia Miller Idris a political science professor who helped in the polarization and the extremism research innovation lab at American University. Reacting to the post findings and the precarity combined with a sense of betrayal and anger that someone is taking something away, mobilizing a lot of people that day. Well, what are people taking away from you? You should have put your personal situation ahead of Trump. The financial missteps by defendants and the attempt, uh, attempted insurrection range from small debts of a few thousand or more uh, than a decade, got unpaid taxes of $400,000. Wow, some, somebody had unpaid tax bills of $400,000. Oh, man. And homes facing foreclosures in recent years. Some of these people seem to have regained their financial footing, but many of them once stood close to the edge. Ryan nearly lost everything. And the stakes seem similarly higher to her when she came to Washington early January. She fully believed Trump's false claims that the election was stolen and that he was going to save the country, she said in an interview with the Post. But now facing federal charges and abandoned by people she considered fellow patriots, she feels portrayed. So it looks like some people in her life have turned on her. I bought into the lie and the lie is the lie. And it's embarrassing, she said. I regret everything. Yeah, because you got caught. The FBI said it found evidence of organized plots by extremist groups 
But many of the people who came to the Capitol on January 6th, including Ryan, appeared to have adopted their radical outlooks more informally, consuming conspiracy theories about the election on TV, social media, and right-wing websites. So, you know what, no matter how much these folks claim they're not into these extremist groups, but they are certainly carrying and bearing the ideology. So I, I don't see how that makes you that much different. It really don't. You don't have to be in a group to have extremist, um, a, an extremist attitude about things. And that's what it seems like Ryan is. She may not be um, part of an organization, but she sure bears those extremist kind of thoughts. Okay, the poor and uneducated are not more likely to join extremist movements, according to experts. Two uh, professors a couple of years ago found that the opposite in one example, an unexpectedly high number of engineers who became Islamic radicals. So they're saying it's really not the poor people that become extremists, it's some of these people that got money they become extremists. In the, capital uh, in the capital attack, business owners and white collar workers made up 40% of the people accused of taking part, according to a study by the Chicago Project on security and threats at the University of Chicago. Only 9% appeared to be unemployed. The participation of people with middle to upper middle class positions fit with the research suggesting that the rise of right wing extremist groups in the 1950s was fueled by people in the middle of society who felt they were losing status and power. Pippa Norris, a political science professor at the Harvard University who has studied radical political movements. Miller Idris said she was struck by the 2011 study that found household income was not a factor in whether a young person supported an extreme far right uh, in Germany. But highly significant uh, predicator was whether they lived through a parent's unemployment these are the people who felt like they've lost something, Miller Idris said. Going through a bankruptcy or failing in you know, paying taxes even years earlier could provoke similar response. They know it can be lost. Yeah, but you know, to me, when you go out and do things like the insurrection, you know you got these troubles, but you're trying to blame other factors other than yourself. Really, it's your own fault. It's your fault. That's not the fault of anybody else. You know, and, and it still goes back to accountability at the end of the day. These people don't want to be accountable for nothing. But they want to tell you to be accountable. No, I, we, we know we're not going to accept that anymore. We're not accepting that. All right. So uh, playing on personal pain, Trump's false claim about election fraud, refuted by election officials and rejected by judges, seemed tailored to exploit feelings, um, you know, in his people. And it was easy to stoke those flames, y'all. And now you can also see how these people got up in a frenzy when they were lynching one of our people. Look how easy it was to get Trump um, Trump got in front of those people and worked them up. Look how easy it was. It don't take much to work these people up. Okay, it's hard to ignore that uh, Trump presidency, that message that America you knew and love is going away and I'm going to protect it. Like Trump is the only one in the world that can protect America. Can y'all please get out of here already? Boy, y'all believe in a lot of unrealistic things. They feel at a minimum that they're under threat. By who? They seem to be their own worst enemy. By who? <laughs> While some financial problems were old, the pandemic 
economic toll appear to inflict fresh pain for some of the people accused of participating in the attempted insurrection. A California man filed bankruptcy one week before allegedly joining the attack, according to public records. A Texas man was charged with entering the Capitol building one month after his company was slapped with nearly a $2,000 state tax lien. Several people were charged in the attack from families with histories of financial duress. Parents of Riley June Williams, a 22-year-old who allegedly helped to steal a laptop from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's Capitol office, filed for bankruptcy when she was a child, according to public records. A house owned by her mother faced foreclosure when she was a teenager, record shows. Recently, a judge placed Williams on home confinement with her mother in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Her federal public defender did not respond to requests for comment, so she can't even afford a lawyer, and she got a public defender. People with professional careers, such as respiratory therapists, nurse, and lawyers were also accused of joining in. Well, ladies and gentlemen, when they lynched our men, pastors participated in the lynchings. And most lynchings took place on a Sunday afternoon. So it really doesn't matter what the profession of the person is. It never mattered before when they were in mobs. Why would it matter now? Seriously, why would it matter now? Okay, and one of them was William McCall Calhoun, 57, a well-known lawyer. So he's out of Georgia. He drove 130 miles south of Georgia to go into D.C. And he got hit with a um, $26,000 federal tax lien in 2019, according to public records. So it doesn't matter what profession these people are in. They seem to accumulate a lot of debt. A woman who knows Calhoun, who spoke on the condition that she can be anonymous, um, said he started to show strong support for Trump only in the past year. An attorney for Calhoun declined to comment. Ashley Babbitt, who shot and killed uh, by police and when she leaped through a broken door window. So she also had a judgment on her for a $23,000 judgment from a lender in 2017, according to court records. So she was heavily in debt too. And it looks like um, they were running a pool service, her family in San Diego. So $23,000 in debt when she died. Financial problems were also apparent among federal authorities, said were connected to far right nationalist groups such as the Proud Boys. Well, I'm not surprised. People in the Proud Boys got financial problems. Come on. So um, this Dominic Prezola, he is a Proud Boy and has a, um, over the past five years, he had a history of state tax warrants totaling $40,000. So that, that should not be Surprising that people in the Proud Boys got debt. I mean, come on now. Okay, so Ryan, who lives in Frisco, Texas, a uh, Dallas suburb, said she was slow to become a big Trump supporter. She's been described as, uh, as a conservative radio talk show host. Uh, she was not budding Rush Limbaugh, her AM radio show each Sunday focused on real estate, and she paid for the airtime. She stopped doing the show in March when the pandemic hit. She continued to run a service that offers advice for people struggling with childhood trauma and bad relationships. Ryan said the work was based on the steps she took over to overcome her own rough upbringing. Divorced twice, in struggling with financial problems, Ryan developed an outlook that she described politically conservative, leaning to a libertarian. So ladies and gentlemen, these folks just made their situation worse. 
they really did by going out there for Trump. You know, and it, like I said, you got to ask yourself, after hearing Trump speak, how many people said, you know what, this is just not for me. You know, I, I just need to leave and go home. You know, nobody used their own brain when they were out there. First of all, you didn't even use your brain if you had all kinds of financial problem and you went to D.C. anyway. So that right there tells me, uh, you know, we don't need any advice from you. We really don't. Because, <laughs> I mean, it looked like you could use plenty of it, uh, of advice yourself, you know, and stop trying to act like you are better than us when at the end of the day, you're not. Y'all just know how to talk a good game, but at, but you're you're really not any of those things that you speak. You're not. You just know how to put on airs. I guess that Oscar performance do come in handy at times. But y'all, please tell me what you think about the majority of these folks arrested are financially in the toilet for real. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.